All righty, I'm going to be in Genesis. So tonight I want to talk about, is Israel um, blessed supernaturally? And I want to be in Genesis chapter 12. <clears throat> so I'm not really going to talk about the politics much at all. I just want to do a Bible study on Israel. Um, and part of the reason is, is because with Israel so, uh, so prominent in the, news, in the news right now with the thing happened to the Palestinian territory, um, I see um, a lot of people saying things about Israel and about the whole situation. And in general, um, not really knowing what they're talking about, but trying to sound spiritual. And uh, I want to just talk to you about Israel and the nation and God's relationship with it and how we should think of it. <clears throat> And, uh, and so, um, Genesis chapter 12, and this is kind of the start of it all, is uh, verse 1 of the Lord's Bacon. Uh, I'm sorry, let me go back and I was a little too far forward. Genesis 12 and, uh, and verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All right, let's pray and ask for the Lord's help. Father, I pray we'd rightly divide the word of truth. We've got to wander from Genesis to Revelation tonight. <clears throat> we pray that we would uh, rightly divide the word and help us understand this. Help us to love these dear people, and uh, and uh, thank you for the Bible and the clarity it gives. I pray it also show your glory and your mercy and your kindness. And uh, Lord, we just pray for wisdom and, and uh, understanding in the scriptures tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. How many are following uh, fairly closely what's happened in Israel? Raise your hand. All the political stuff. and the So <clears throat> Israel's attacked in a terrorist attack by... Hamas, which is part of the Palestinian territory, it just came out of the blue, and uh, it's it's rare. You, they used to get a lot of bombs in Israel because people just went back and forth in the Palestinian territories. But then they built a wall, and then they gave the Gaza Strip completely to the Palestinians. They even pulled out of it, and uh, but uh, there in uh, uh, recently, the Palestinians had a massive attack, killed like thirteen hundred uh, Jewish folks. Uh, uh, civilians, everybody, kids, everybody, and it was unprovoked. And, uh, you know, the Palestinian <clears throat> people, I've been to Palestinian territory, I've been to Israel. Um, you know, the Palestinian people are just people. People are people, you know. Um, but Hamas is very evil. Uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, because of Hamas, you know, the Palestinians are in horrible shape and things like that. It's, it's a big mess over there. And, uh, of course, there's no perfect government, and Israel is, has their you know, imperfections, but uh, certainly this, this attack was, you know, horrible uh, on civilians. And, uh, and so now Israel's going through Gaza, the Gaza, the, um, <clears throat> the Gaza Strip, and just going through and systematically destroying everything as Hamas. Uh, unfortunately, Hamas has a lot of, they, they, they have a lot of civilians in the way, and they won't let the civilians leave. And so it's kind of a mess, and a lot of people are dying. And uh, it's, it's just, it's war's ugly. And even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Israel um, is God started with Abraham. And uh, <clears throat> Abraham is told to leave the Ur of the Chaldees and to go to a land that he didn't know of. God picked a land for Abraham. Okay. And, uh, and, and so Abraham left there and, uh, and went. Then we go to chapter 17 of Genesis. And he ended up in this Canaan land, which is Israel. Genesis 17 and verse 19, it says this, And God said, uh, Sarah thy wife shall bear a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with this seed after him. So, really important here. <clears throat> Abraham, Abraham got, uh, God told him to leave the other Chaldees and made a covenant with him. And he's going to renew this covenant multiple times. We'll read probably four different times uh, in, this, in, in Genesis where he goes to Abraham and says, hey, I'm going to do this. And he makes it very clear. But that's a super important passage we read right there because he says, your son Isaac that comes from Sarah, I'm going to establish my covenant with him. It's going from you to Isaac. 
Now, Abraham had many other children, but Isaac was that child of promise that the covenant went through, and Isaac was Israel, as was Jacob, and then Jacob had uh, the 12 children, and uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and that's the nation of Israel. And so there's a covenant here. <clears throat> the covenant is basically four things. There's a couple other things that are mentioned here and there, but basically, basically it's a land. We see that in chapter 12, verse 1. Um, let's go back to chapter 12 and verse, uh, we'll look at this again. And uh, number two is many descendants as the sand of the sea as the stars of heaven in verse two. And I will, make the, uh, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. <clears throat> so he's going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, many descendants, okay, um, and nations and uh but he says here, notice it's singular at this point. I'll make of thee a great nation. Now, he ended up making more than one nation, Abraham did, but it wasn't what God wanted him to do. It was a lack of faith that made him take Hagar and uh, impregnate her because he couldn't wait on God to fulfill his promise. And so uh, he's father of many nations, but God said, I'll make of you a great nation because he was going to continue Israel um, through Sarah. And that was the plan. And, uh, and God still did that, but there was others. Um, next, the messianic line of blessings. He says, at the end of verse 2, he says, I will make you a blessing. Um, let's go to chapter 22. From Abraham would come a messianic line that would bless all nations and all people, and the Messiah would come. He's called the, Jesus is called the seed of Abraham, okay? And chapter 22, this is also part of the covenant, and verse uh, 15, <clears throat> it said, And the angel of the Lord uh, called unto Abraham, and uh, out of, uh, called unto Abraham out of heaven, uh, the second time, and said, uh, by myself, um, uh, so Abraham, again, this is, this is going to be, this is not anything new, and, and we read it again in chapter 17. These aren't new things. He's, he's renewing these covenants, um, and it says, I myself have sworn, saith the Lord, and because uh, for thou hast done this thing, and hast not uh, withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned uh, uh, unto the young men, that, uh, that, uh, and they rose up and went together. And so <clears throat> you see this uh, promise and blessing that in, in him all these people will be blessed, plus the other parts of the covenant. And then chapter 25, we'll just read one more passage on the covenant that's important in verse 11. It says, And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by uh, by the well, and uh, and so uh, Lehirad, <clears throat> Lehirad, So Abraham, uh, his blessing passed upon Isaac. Isaac is the father of Israel, and so um, this is the nation that has it. So um, you see, it's Abraham, then Isaac, and it's this nation of Israel. So we have a land. We have many descendants. We have uh, Messiah, uh, uh, the Messiah's line's blessing as the seed of Abraham. And then we have a blessing or a curse, depending on how people treat him. Genesis chapter 12. A blessing or a curse, depending on how people treat him. Chapter 12. <clears throat> and verse 3. It says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, pretty consistent. And you see four parts of this covenant, how you treat Israel and Abraham's descendant will determine how God treats you. And so we see this. Um, this is an everlasting covenant. Super important. Okay. Chapter 17. Chapter 17. It's everlasting. Because <clears throat> that's the Lord. Whatever God does, he's faithful and uh, 
He keeps his word. In verse 7, chapter 17 and verse 7, I will establish my covenant between me and them, uh, uh, and thy, uh, me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and unto thy seed after thee. And I'll give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger and the, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So it's really clear God's going to do this everlasting covenant with Abraham and his seed, and the land is going to be theirs forever. Okay? Now, <clears throat> just a caveat here. Um, I don't think Israel should have the land of Israel um, just because the Bible said so. Okay? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think that people and possessions, and if God wants to do it, God can do it. I think God did it supernaturally. There's no other way to explain it. Um, but um, Israel will have that land forever, okay? But they didn't have it forever, okay? I don't think you should be, like, I, my, I had made a good friend there when I was in Israel, <clears throat> and uh, he was Palestinian by ethnicity, but he was born in Israel, and his family had lived in the land, he told me, since the time of Christ. Okay, um, so he's Palestinian, but he's a Jewish citizen, okay? But they've been there forever, you know? They were Canaanites forever, you know, of, of one sort or another. <clears throat> Yet they've lived there for all that time, probably mixed some Jewish blood in there somewhere along the way. But there was very few Jews at different periods in history. There was always some, I believe, but just not always, but that man's family shouldn't be displaced. They should be able to live within there and be Israeli citizens, um, and that's, that's, that's fair and just, but, but this land will be Israel's forever, and it's an everlasting covenant. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to give you a bunch of points biblically, and, and some of them you're going to be surprised at, but they're just biblical um, points. They're really not very, they're, they're pretty clear in the Bible, and so I'm just going to give you a bunch of thoughts here. Um, and, and go through everything else, just be just biblical thoughts here. Number one, um, <clears throat> this is an everlasting covenant, but this can be lifted for a time if Israel goes back on their covenant with God. Let's go to Deuteronomy. I'm gonna, now, this happened, this has happened many times. So, the land of Israel is an everlasting possession for Israel, but they were displaced. They were displaced by the Babylonians in the 600 BC, BC time. <clears throat> they were scattered across the world from 70 AD until 1947. Okay? Um, so this, this covenant is part of that. And God, Deuteronomy talks a lot about this. He says, I'm giving you this land, but if you disobey me, I'm going to scatter you. And you see in verse 3, he says, but if you repent, I'll bring you back. Uh, then said the Lord, uh, thy God, unto um, <clears throat> uh, the Lord thy God. Uh, I'm sorry. Then, uh, uh, let me try. Sorry, that again. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. So he's saying, you know what? I'll bring you back, but I will scatter you. And take you out of your land if that happens. <clears throat> of course, that's one of the ways of punishment because this land was part of the covenant with God. And to take them out of that land was saying, you're not right with me. You're being punished. And so uh, they could be taken out of it. That happened. This happened. Let's look at, uh, look at, look at Jeremiah chapter 30. This happened, of course, in the Babylonian captivity. Um, Assyria took many of them out and, and different things. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, Deuter uh, let's see, Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I have made a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. Yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I'll correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. He says, I've scattered you. And so that's part 
of what happens there. But God says at the same time, you know, I'm not going to forsake you completely. And, uh, and if you look in chapter 29, and we saw a couple of verses where God would have mercy on them. In verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God's very merciful, and he's not wanting to do this, but he had to do it to punish them. So here's this covenant. It's an everlasting covenant, but it doesn't mean that God can't punish them and take it away for a time, but God has to continue to keep this nation alive, give them back the land at some point, have Messiah come from them, because God promised these things. These things have to happen, but it doesn't mean that it's, they're always going to be in the land or that they're always going to be blessed. Okay? Because God lives his covenant sometimes um, uh, for a time to punish them. It seems... Uh, let me get this point later. Uh, the Lord left Israel desolate since the time of Christ. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. <clears throat> so this is going to be important because Israel, in one of these punishments, it happened at the time of Christ. Why? Because they completely rejected. It says they missed the day of their visitation. The very thing that they were to have, which is Messiah come out of their line, Messiah was standing right there in the middle of them, and they completely rejected him and then crucified him. <clears throat> and so because of that, they were left desolate. Now, give me time on that because I want to explain that because sometimes anti-Semitism comes out of that and anti-Semitism is unbiblical and wrong. I'll, I'll explain why this works and all these things. Um, verse, uh, Jesus is teaching them not one stone will be left upon another later on in the chapter, but he says in verse, uh, oh, let's see, 36, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her children under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And then chapter 24, chapter verse 2, See ye all these things, the, the temple and Jerusalem? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be one uh, left uh, here, uh, one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. <clears throat> well, in 70 AD, as Jesus prophesied, Titus, the Roman general, came in and ransacked Jerusalem, burnt down the whole, the whole city. Uh, they scattered the Jews. The temple was burned to the ground, uh, just slaughtered Jerusalem, and Jerusalem was left desolate. And Israel, from that time, was a scattered people. They were all over the place. And they say stayed scattered, all, mostly in Europe, but they were in the Middle East. They were in Africa. They were all over the world. They, they were scattered. You could find them in India. You can find them in China. They were a scattered people, and, uh, and they were left desolate out of their land. And you do not see, after this time, God doing miraculous protection, God blessing the nation in a great way, protecting them from their enemies, uh, his presence coming there. They've never been able to rebuild a temple. <clears throat> Why? Why? Because God said, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving this covenant. And I'm going to a new people. Now, uh, we'll get to that. He's not completely rejected them, but there is a time now where they are desolate. Okay? And we see this in this passage. Let me take it to Romans and just show it to you in Romans here, chapter 11. What I'm saying here, let me say it super clearly, is as a nation right now, God is not in covenant and blessing Israel. They are not his nation in that way right now. As a nation. Now, as individuals, they can be saved just like a German, uh, you know, a Polish person, uh, uh, an Arabic person, a Chinese person. They can be saved just like anybody. <clears throat> but now it's a church age. It's not Israel's age. God, Israel didn't exist it wasn't there from 70 AD until 1947. It was gone because God was not uh, 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 blessing them and taking care of them. 
And, and so Romans chapter 11 and verse 15, it says this, for <clears throat> if the casting away of them, the context of the whole chapter is Israel, be the reconciling of the world, uh, what shall the reconciling of uh, 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 receiving of them be? But from the dead. Okay, so it's showing there that God has kind of cast them away. Verse 17. It says, For if, if some of the branches, that's Israel, be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them, uh, and with them partakers of the root, and the fatness of the olive tree, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> boast not thyself against the branches. But if thou, bo uh, if thou boast, thou um, uh, bearest not the root, but the root thee. Does you, look, Israel kept the truth. The Messiah came from Israel. Yes, they've been cut off for a while. This nation has. But don't get arrogant. You've been grafted in to this thing of God. Wilt thou say then the branches are broken off, that I may be grafted in? Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed that he also spare not thee. He says, look, Israel was broken off from God as a nation. <clears throat> he said, your house is left desolate, and now he's gone, to the, uh, he's gone to the Gentiles. Now, of course, the guy writing this is Jewish. But as a nation, he has taken them out, and now all nations can come to Christ, and they can be grafted into salvation through Christ. It says you weren't put in there because God loved you so much or because you were, you were now the nation of God. It says you are there because you had faith. That's why you're brought in there, he says. It says uh, because of their unbelief, verse 20, they were broken off, but thou standest by faith. So it's a matter of faith. It's not a matter, matter of ethnicity. You're not saved by race. You're saved by grace. Okay. <clears throat> and so because of that, Israel in general went into unbelief. That's why in the middle of Acts it says, behold, I go to the Gentiles. You're just not receiving this. You're just not receiving Christ. Now, some did, and, uh, but many did not. And as a nation, they didn't, and then they were left desolate. <clears throat> Just to prove that, I mean, you can see it in the Bible. Uh, when in First Samuel, they thought that God was going to be with them, and they brought the Ark of the Covenant out in First Samuel to fight against the Philistines, and the God was not with the Ark of the Covenant. The Philistines came in there, grabbed the Ark of the Covenant, and took it off. Why? Because God wasn't with Israel. Ichabod, the glory is departed. That's a time, and God said, my blessing's off you. It's, and don't get arrogant, Israel, because I have blessed you to think you just don't have to serve me. If you don't serve me, I will scatter you. I will take my blessing. I will let your enemies come and get you. And so that's what God did. <clears throat> and so God does that. Now, which part of the covenants are still in there? Well, all of them. Because it's an everlasting covenant. So they're going to come back. Messiah certainly came. There's certainly, they were never wiped out. Hitler tried that. A lot of people tried that. Uh, Stahl, or Lenin killed it. Gazillion, Stalin killed it, lots of Jews. A lot of uh, wicked dictators. Have, it's always a Jew's fault for wicked people. Okay? And they've been, they're the, they're the people who've tried, they tried to, the genocide against them more than any other people. And yet they would never be cut off. You can never get rid of all the Jews. Why? Because God has an everlasting covenant with them. They're going to be in their land. If they were in the land right now, we could still say they're going to be in the land. You can read old commentaries saying, you know, Israel's coming back you know, to, to Israel. They have to. God said it's an everlasting possession. Israel wasn't a nation at the time. They didn't speak the same language. They were everywhere. Okay? And so, but, but they, they had, that had to happen. All those things. I will say this. <clears throat> it looks like to me, I can't say this because the Bible doesn't say one way or another. It looks like to me that people who bless them are blessed still and people who curse them are cursed still. That just looks like it just from history, okay? I brought an image up here. I just thought it was an interesting image. If we can bring that up. So, of course, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of strife between the Arabs and, and Israel, 
But you know, the, the Quran says vegetation comes out of good land in abundance. They will, uh, by the will of its Lord, but out of bad land, only poor vegetation comes forth. Well, the brown is the area of Allah. <clears throat> <coughs> literally okay and a lot of not all but a lot of a lot of the middle east a lot of the muslims want israel destroyed okay now not all of them they're sweet wonderful nice uh muslim people who are very kind and get along with jews just fine <clears throat> but the two countries who stood for israel in 1947 to become a nation the first two stood up England and America, okay? Um, and you find that just historically, na people who support Israel and protect Jewish, uh, protect Jewish people, um, they're, they're prosperous, they're blessed. And, and you find people who, who attack them and hate them generally aren't. Now, I don't know the Bible, because the other parts of covenant God has taken them out of, but that one seems to still be happening. Um, certainly, they're going to be an everlasting habitation. Certainly, they got back to the land of Israel miraculously. doesn't make any sense how they got back. <clears throat> but we have that, um, and we see that, and, uh, and we see that. Next, this is the time of gen the Gentiles, Romans 11. This is the time of the Gentiles. Um, verse 11, it says, I, I, uh, I say then... <clears throat> have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, um, for to provoke them to jealousy. Okay, we're in the time of the Gentiles um, right now, and that's the time when the whole world is God's people. Anybody who comes to Jesus is a child of God and is under the promises of God. Okay, anybody. Praise the Lord for that. I'm a child of God. It says in Romans 2, I believe it is. It says, he is a Jew, not which is one outwardly, but which is one inwardly. Okay? So we're the, we're the children of covenant. We're the children of God. When we're saved, we trust Christ. We're spiritually under God's covenant. <clears throat> and God does that for us. Um, this is um, the time of the Gentiles there. And for all the world to be saved. Verse 15. It says, for the casting away of them be the uh, reconciling of the world. What shall the receiving of them be? But life from the dead. Because they're going to come back to God one day. And so, but the reconciling of the world. For God so loved the world. That's what Jesus kept showing. He went to the Samaritan woman. The good Samaritan in the story. The Ethiopian uh, getting saved. It's, uh, Jesus kept on bringing these people from other nations, other countries. And, and in, the, in the Acts, book of Acts, they kept on having that. <clears throat> the nation, understand it's really important, the nation is put aside for now, but not the individual people. Jewish people can be saved just like Polish people, just like a Native American, okay? They're people. <laughs> they can be saved. Now, it's a special thing. You know, the Bible says in Romans 1, uh, Romans 1, 16, it says, preach the gospel to the Jew first. It's the power of God and salvation to the Jew first and also the Gentiles. God says, hey, they're my chosen people and, 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 I, and, and I love them and make sure they get the gospel. And that's what they did in the book of Acts. They took the gospel to the Jews first. When they rejected it, they went to the Gentiles, but God loves them and they can be saved. I've had two different Jewish evangelists preach in our church. And praise the Lord. But as a nation, they've re rejected the Messiah. But individuals um, can still do that. <clears throat> Just like they said in Japan, you know, the nation is not open to the gospel, yet there are Japanese churches with Christians in them. So the nation has not received Christ, and the nation is not, is not believing, but there are individuals, and that's true of anybody who wants that. Romans chapter 10, verse 1, or Romans 11, verse 1, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Um, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Look, all the apostles were Jewish, and they were writing scripture. The book of James is in the Bible. God is right, and it's to the tribes. It's a Jewish book. Hebrews. It's not about coffee. Okay? It's about, it's about a nation. 
It's about the, it's to the Hebrew people, and it's telling them very deep because there's many, many believers. Three thousand saved and baptized Jewish, uh, five thousand. These are Jews in in Jerusalem. Many, I mean, just thousands. So, so God has not cast them away as a people, but the nation has broken the covenant, and they've been left desolate, and they are uh, they are um, not not in that situation anymore. Verse thirteen, uh, Romans ten thirteen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. <clears throat> God still loves them and will save them, just like everybody else, if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It never become anti-Semitic and be against them or treat them or think of them as any worse than anybody else. Okay? They are God's chosen people. Now, they get a pass? No. They're the same as anybody else. If a Jewish person steals a car, he should get the same punishment as a, you know, Mexican. Right? It doesn't matter. Anybody who does something wrong, they're all treated the same. As a Jew gets saved, praise the Lord. If a Gentile gets saved, praise the Lord. It's all the same. People are people. And, 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 and it's all the same. But to become anti-Semitic, <clears throat> you got to understand... Um, uh, God still loves them, even in the rejection. Look at Romans 10, 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. A burden for them, for them to be saved and come to Christ. And, and, and Romans chapter 11, it says, don't boast yourself against them. Verse 18 through 21. And it says, look, God has been good. He can reject you just like he rejected them. Don't be proud. Look, they've been removed for a while, and you've got the opportunity to be saved. But don't be against them and say, look at them, ha, ha, ha. No, God can reject you just as simply. And so don't, don't boast yourself against them. Zechariah 2, verse 8 says, God is the apple of, or that Israel is the apple of God's eye. Romans 11, and verse 28 tells us, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. They're the ones persecuting us right now. But as touching the election, salvation, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Even in their persecution against God, God still loves them. <clears throat> God still loves them. And if you ever want to call them a Christ killer, understand Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down. If you want to know who the Christ killer was, look in the mirror. He died for your sins. They were just, them and the Romans were just the people who executed the plan of God. For Jesus, Jesus had to die. It would have been somebody. Okay? And so uh, he died for our sins. That's why he had to die. because we're sinners. And all of us are a part of that. <clears throat> but this does not mean God is with them. Okay? This does not mean God is with them. And they are right all the time. The Antichrist is, is anti-Semitic and brings all the nations against Israel to destroy it. But Israel is wrong sometimes. <clears throat> um, I think in that neighborhood, they're the best country. Because a, there's a lot of bad countries in the Middle East that are just horrible. It's a democracy. It's, uh, uh, it, they try to have some humanitarian stuff. But it's not perfect. It's not a godly nation. It's not a Jewish. It's, it's, it's a, it's, ethnically, it's Jewish Partly, it is. It is. It does not follow Judaism. It's a secular nation. Okay, it's not a godly nation, um, and, and even even by Judaism standards. Okay, um, <clears throat> um, but it doesn't mean it's always right. I'll see sometimes in the the war that's going on, the people a Christian right. God is with Israel, and they're going to win no matter what. No, they could lose a war. They can't be wiped out, but they can be wrong. They can make a wrong decision. They can do evil things. God, they're just, they have better weapons and better training. <laughs> that, that's, that, that, that's, that's, now, they, now, let me, with all that said, <clears throat> they had to become a nation again because in the end times, Israel's a nation and they have the Temple Mount. They have a temple there. In the end times, all that happens that Israel had to become a nation because, we'll read that in a minute here, but Isaiah said, I'm going to gather you from all nations back to your land in the end. 
That's one of the reasons we know we're getting toward the end. Because Israel's a nation again. And Israel is scattered. I'm telling you, they were scattered from Mongolia to South Africa to Argentina to Canada to the Yukon. They were everywhere. Okay? And they could, and, and their enemies occupied their land, and the land was desolate. And then the Holocaust happened. And they kept getting pushed, 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 pushed. And you know, the weird thing is, good nations rejected them. Did you know boatloads of Jews fled the Holocaust and came to America and America sent them away? Do you know that? That didn't even make sense. Except for, <clears throat> where'd they head? Back to Israel. <laughs> and, and, the, and, and they came and all of a sudden it became a nation and other Jews heard about it and they came and they came and they came and all of a sudden there's still Jews all around the world yet they came back and this nation was revived as the Bible said it would be supernaturally. If you, they do not study the Jewish wars of 1947, 1967, 1973. They don't study those wars in West Point. They say there's nothing to be learned from them. It makes no sense. <clears throat> I mean, literally, yet five nations attack them at one time. They all had superior firepower, and boom, they just Israel just destroyed them. In 19, it's you know, how many days? Six day, seven day, a six day war against five nations that attack them. In 1947, you got these Jews landing on the shore and all these nations around them saying, this is amazing, fish in a barrel. We've got all the Jews together. Let's kill them. And they told the Palestinians, leave. All the people living in Israel, leave. We're going to slaughter the Jews. Just leave. We've got all the armies waiting. And the, the Palestinians went out, <clears throat> joined up with them. The Jews who were landing on shore, who were there, the Air Force was one Cessna. That's a little tiny dinky plane that holds two people. Okay? It's not a war plane. They didn't speak the same language the Jews didn't. Try to fight a war when one's speaking Polish and one's speaking French. <clears throat> they didn't speak the same language. They barely had any weapons. It didn't make any sense. And yet when all the smoke cleared, they won the war and they had the land. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's because they, they had to come back and get that land. Now, that was supernatural. And you could, you could read accounts of the supernatural things that happened during those wars where even the Arabs are saying there's giant beings with flaming swords standing there with them. It's just, it's just a, lot of, a lot of accounts of that. <clears throat> there's a great documentary on that. I forgot the name of that. Miss Jennifer, you remember the name of that? If it'll come to me. It was really good. It talks about a lot of the wars and how miraculous it was. And I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I'll, if I don't remember it, I'll, I'll bring it back. <clears throat> but uh, I believe God is involved sometimes to fulfill his grand plan because God is going to go back to Israel and they're going to be his nation again and under the covenant again. Okay, that's all going to happen. Um, but this does not mean that they're always right. It does not mean that God's with them. <clears throat> it just means in the end, God's coming back to them and God still loves them. Then, then let me say, but God will bring them back to his uh, specially blessed people. Romans 11 and verse 1, I say then, am I Romans? Yep, I say then, if God cast away his people, God forbid, for I also am a Jew of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not permanently cast them away. God hath not cast away, verse 2, his people which he foreknew. He says, yes. Now he's going to say later, he says, yes, they've been broken off, but God's not done. They're, it is not that they're no longer his people. They're just not being blessed under the covenant right now, just like they weren't when they're in Babylon, but God brought them back from Babylon supernaturally and gave them their land and worked with Nehemiah and worked in Ezra and rebuilt the temple. God was away for a while, but God didn't permanently get rid of them. God is still their God. But right now, they're not under covenant. Right now, it's a time of the Gentiles, as it says here in this chapter, until a time of the Gentiles um, be fulfilled. <clears throat> and so, um, we, we have that, and, and we see that. And so, um, let's look at uh, Romans, uh, let's see, let's look at verse 
25 here. It says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, um, uh, lest ye should uh, be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part hath happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Okay? It is a time period until the time of the Gentiles is done. And then Israel will no longer be blind. But there's blindness on them right now. They're not seeing it. They can look at all those passages in the Old Testament and Isaiah and Psalms and Zechariah and all these passages. If they prophesy all these things about Jesus and they can say, I don't see it. And not accept him. Many of them. Um, let's continue on. Um, verse 26, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That was a promise in the Old Testament when the Messiah would turn ungodliness away from Israel and they would accept him. Yet it hasn't happened. It didn't happen when he came. But God's promises will always be fulfilled. But it's going to happen at the end times. When the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled, Israel will be saved and come to Christ. <clears throat> um, Verse 27, for this is my covenant with them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God said, I called them my people, I called Abraham, I don't change my mind. I don't change their mind. And so I have that. This is why they were never wiped out. This is why they never assimilated into different cultures and became another culture. There are people, the Phoenicians, just to throw one out there, they were powerful, well-known people, and they got conquered, and then they moved here, and then other people bred with them, and then another nation came in, and then other nations are formed, and there's no Phoenicians anymore. That's so common in world history. The Jews were scattered and still remained Jewish. Let alone being in a region. Okay, that happened. There, there's, you know, there's Mohicans and there's all kinds of, there's <clears throat> Incans, Incas and stuff like that. And it's very hard to find any part of that culture that's still alive and still there. Okay, and, and there's many in history, and you can go all over the world where they just, where they just, they, they bred with somebody else, or a new country conquered them, and they became this, and they interbred and took this culture on, and the other, these countries split up, and then they became their own culture. But Israel, even though they didn't have a nation, they stayed Jewish, the only country ever to do that. There's never been a, a language wiped out and brought back again, except for Hebrew. Okay, and put into action. Just a bunch of unique things. I don't have time to go into all those things. But it's because God did not end them. He was not done with them. In the end times, all Israel shall be saved. I'll keep my covenant with them. I love them. And we see this in Revelation chapter 7. We see Israel coming back as God's nation. We'll try to finish up here. <clears throat> so I don't just look at Israel and say, oh, they're right. And they are, are going to win every war. I just know that Israel is never going to be wiped out. If they get wiped off their land, they'll be back. It has to happen. Okay? We just know that because that's the covenant. I know God still loves them and has a heart for them. I know that, uh, uh, that those that bless them uh, will, uh, will be blessed, and those that curse them will be cursed. All these things. Revelation 7 and verse 4, the end times, and it says, And I, and I heard the number of them which were sealed. Okay, these people are protected supernaturally, and they're Jewish. And they were sealed at 144,000 of all the tribes, the children of Israel. If you go to chapter 14, it tells more about what these people are doing. And in Revelation 14, and verse 3, it's, it says, And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth, saved. 
These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which followed the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These are Jewish people who are now following the Lamb, protected by God. They got a mark of God on their forehead, and the plagues don't affect them, and they are going to take the gospel of the whole world. And these are redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and of the Lamb. The first fruits, well, these are the 144,000. They, they get saved at the start of the tribulation, and they go take the gospel of the whole world, Jewish evangelists. And then many Gentiles get saved. Why? Because God's hand is on Israel. And in their mouth was found no guile. And they were, they were without fault before the throne of God. And I saw an angel uh, fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Starts the Jews and the whole world gets a gospel during the end times. You find <clears throat> in Revelation and uh, chapter 12, you find the dragon, the devil, goes after Israel. Israel's this woman with 12 crowns, and it's, it's, Jew, it's Israel. In verse 12, and it says, And the dragon saw that, uh, uh, that he was cast the earth. He persecuted the woman, which brought forth a child. That's Jesus. Now, that child redeems the world. It's Jesus, obviously. The devil, when he comes to earth, is going to go after the child. Follow evil dictators and see how they treat Jews. Why? Because the devil hates Israel because it brought out Jesus and because they're God's people. And so they hate Jews and kill them and blame them for everything. There was no reason. You know, Hitler was a quarter Jew, right? Okay. There was no reason for him to hate the Jewish people like that in, in Germany or for the leaders of the Soviet Union, so many other uh, terrible dictators in history. But the devil always persecutes the Jews, okay? And that's what he does. And so, in the end time, he goes out there more furiously. But here's what happens. You read Matthew 24 and Revelation 12 together. It, it's the same, same time period. He sends armies after Israel. God says, hey, run to the mountains. Israel, God is with them, and he gives them wings like an eagle. They run to the mountains, and somewhere in the mountains, there's a safe place prepared by God, and God squalls up the Antichrist army, and they're protected for three and a half years. Why? Because God's protecting it with Israel again. There is people again in the Daniel 70th week, the end times. Uh, let's read verse 14. And, the woman, and to the woman were given great wings as an eagle, and that she might fly into the wilderness and into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman uh, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, and the dragon, uh, the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth of the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God and the testimonies of Jesus Christ. Israel now has a testimony of Jesus Christ. And those who didn't make it or the newly saved Christians from all around the world to be persecuted by the devil. At Armageddon, the entire world is gathered by the Antichrist as much as he can gather, and they're there to destroy. They're in the Valley of Armageddon preparing to march against Jerusalem. Let's do, we'll finish up here in Luke 21. <clears throat> Follow this. Covenant is not, they're not underneath it now because they, they, they rejected the Messiah, but they can still be saved like everybody else as individuals. They just got to join church and go to church. But then Israel will, or st God still loves them. And he, and he still says, I made an everlasting covenant and I'm coming back to it. And you're going to come to me and you will be saved and be my people. And then you'll be all under that covenant and they will get Israel the land forever. All of it. <clears throat> and uh, Luke chapter 21 and uh, verse uh, 20 End time passage, Jesus speaking. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof draweth nigh. Okay, verse 26, though. Uh, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things began to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It says Israel, Jesus coming, look up and see him coming. You know what the amazing thing about this is? The, the thing that we can learn. What can we learn? We can learn the amazing 
patience of God. He, 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 they have rejected him as a, as a nation for 2,000 years. And he still says, you're beloved for the Father's sake. The gift and callings of God are that repentance. I told you, I made an everlasting covenant with you. I told you you're getting the land. I told you I'll bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. I told you your seed uh, will be like the sand of the sea. I told you Messiah will come out of your line. I'm keeping all those things. And you are going to be my people. And you are going to be in covenant with me. And I will be your God. Because God doesn't change his mind. Isn't that reassuring? That God still loves you? And you've only been a dodo for 10 years? Right? Thank God for his mercy. The gift and callings of God are without repentance. Thank God for his mercy and his everlasting love. He still loves him. He still loves him. And I thank God for that. So that's the covenant. That's Israel. And that's God's relationship with them. And I thank God I've been grafted in. We all are God's people. From whatever country you're from, whether we're Jewish or Gentile, whether we're English or, <clears throat> or Ethiopian, doesn't matter. Anybody can be saved. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible. As we look into this, I pray we'd understand Israel and their situation. Lord, it's, it's a mess over there right now, Father, and uh, Lord, it's just, it's just tough, and there's not really even a, a simple solution to stopping the killing of people, and I just pray you'd work in a great way, and even so, come Lord Jesus, I pray you give leaders on both sides wisdom. It'd be great, Lord, that the Palestinians would shed themselves of Hamas, and to be able to live as peaceful neighbors, uh, that'd be great, Lord, and uh, uh, we, we just pray you'd uh, just give wisdom there to in that situation help us to be thankful for your patience for your mercy um, for your the way you keep your word and never break it and we just thank you and give you the glory that you've had this love for all this time with these people in jesus name amen